All right, well, good morning, Redeemer Bible Church. This is Jason Stinson again here for the Daily Word. And uh, today we have uh, Romans chapter 15, as I kind of end my little uh, section in Romans here for the Daily Words. And uh, Romans uh, uh, chapter 15 is uh, Paul, you know, he's writing to the, Rome, the church in Rome. And so he's explaining a lot of things here. He kind of uh, immediately kind of follows up more of his thoughts that he had from Romans 14. And then he goes on to talk to uh, kind of personally to the, the church in Rome about his own ministry, about why he hasn't uh, been to visit him, visit them, and also kind of ask them for prayer as he continues to uh, uh, minister to others and so that he can complete his ministry. And so um, right, right away here, chapter 15, in verses 1 through 7, it's kind of a continuation, really, of what we had in uh, chapter 14, where it's uh, talking about the uh, the strong in the faith and the weak in the faith. And so um, this he's giving, uh, in verses 1 through 7 here, when he immediately addresses the strong. It says, we, verse 1, we who are strong have an obligation to bear with the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. So um, that word bear means to carry the weight of. And so right now he's giving more application um, to the stronger in the faith and how to um, act towards the weaker in the faith. And so he's, he's telling them here to bear with them, to bear, to carry the weight of uh, the failings of the weak and to not please ourselves some more. It, 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 again, it's that Philippians 2, 3, right, to regard... Um, others is more important than yourselves and so he goes on to say that basically christ gave us our example of that that's why we need to do that we need to do that to glorify god to be obedient to christ and to be christ like that christ did not please himself and then i think in verse five and verses uh five and six like really we get kind of like this this amazing summary statement which is just an an, an absolute awesome bible verse uh, or Bible verse is, but it sums up perfectly all of chapter uh, 14 and 15, and it's a great verse for us to apply to ourselves and to our own lives as we seek to live in unity with other believers, and it says this, uh, starting at verse 5, it says, May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus, that together you may with one voice, glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so that is just this amazing call for people to live in unity and to not uh, be judgmental of those that um, are different than us uh, because of non-moral issues. So kind of like a, a summary statement for all of chapter 14 and the beginning of chapter 15 here in verses 1 through 7. So then Paul kind of starts to um, talk to... Uh, um, the Roman church. And so right on, from verses 8 through 13, he's kind of telling that uh, the plan all along in, in God's plan was for the Jews and for the Gentiles to be together. So it was the Jews as the covenant people, and then there were the Gentiles, but God's plan was always to bring salvation to everyone and for the Jews and for the Gentiles to be together. And then it goes on to like, because that is true, and because God granted salvation to the Gentiles, to those that were not his covenant people, then the response to that truth should be for the Gentiles to be praising God because of that. And then he ends um, that kind of that section in verse uh, verses 13 with this really cool uh, kind of like Pauline benediction, which is just, uh, I, I just love the language of it. And it's great. And it just says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the holy spirit you may abound in hope and so that's that's an encouraging statement for all of us as those that um I have been given salvation that the response for us is to praise god and to abound in hope and then in verses uh, 14 through 21 paul is really just addressing the roman church and so he he um he goes on to uh to you know he didn't the, the roman church didn't know paul personally paul wasn't the one that founded that church he was out uh 
planting churches in regions regions where there were no churches and so he starts to explain to them really um why he was giving them this apostolic uh um, instruction why he was kind of writing this letter to them with such authority and basically he's um he's basically saying that uh they didn't know him personally but they could trust him because he was an apostle of god and that he uh, was basically just trying to explain to him what his ministry was and why he was writing to them. And so that's kind of what you see through verses 14 through 21. And then in verses uh, 22 through 29, if you read through that, Paul basically here is explaining to them that because, again, he was out doing his own ministry, his, his main ministry was uh, given him by Christ to the Gentiles, and that he wanted to be in regions and go to uh, places where there were no churches established, where the gospel was not being preached. And so his main focus was there. And that's why, again, he had never uh, been to Rome to be with these believers. And so um, he starts to tell them that because of all that being true, that uh, uh, now he's been to these different regions around Rome and that he's planted these churches and his ministry has been uh, kind of... Uh, established in these areas and now he plans to come to visit them because he just wants to uh, be with and uh, the encouragement of other believers and the fellowship of the saints and so he's heard of like the good work that's going on at the church in Rome and he wants to visit them so he goes on to uh, say why he hasn't again and then also kind of say that he's on his way to Jerusalem before he can visit them because uh, he's he's on a charitable mission to uh, deliver um, some money from some other churches to the church of jerusalem these other churches had received uh the jews had given the the gospel to gentiles and so in response to that the gentiles are responding uh financially to meet the needs of the church in jerusalem and so paul was going to go to jerusalem first to uh, deliver um, this charity to uh, Jerusalem from these other churches. And so he's explaining to them that he wants to come visit the church in Rome and that uh, he's got to do this other uh, ministry first. And then he hopes to uh, um, be able to uh, be with them someday and be able to meet with them someday. So then because he's going to Jerusalem, because he's going to go on this other uh, ministry uh, appointment, I guess you could call it, in verses 30, 30 through 33, uh, ending out the chapter of uh, Romans 15, Paul asks uh, the, the, the church in Rome to pray for him. So he asked, uh, he knows that when he goes to Jerusalem, as you see here, uh, verse 30 says, I appeal to you, brothers, by our Lord Jesus Christ and by the love of the Spirit to strive together with me in your prayers to God on my behalf. So he's asking for prayer, for them to pray for him. Pray for him that I may be delivered from the unbelievers in Judea. And so there was a, still a number of Jews that uh, that did not accept his gospel message. And because of that, they uh, he was uh, in fear for his life because of it, really. There was a, a group of people that would want to attack him to end the ministry that he had. So he's asking um, this, these brothers uh, in, in the Roman church to, to be in prayer for him, that he would be able to complete the ministry that God had for him and so uh, it ends with this prayer and uh, just a wonderful section of, of, of scripture really so I would take time as we've gone through this really kind of quickly for you to spend more time of course in, in Romans chapter 15 and, and to enjoy all that uh, it all that is there for us but again um, as a meditation I would I would ask you to uh, uh, really meditate on verses uh, 5 and 6, that may the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another, in accord with Christ Jesus, that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. What an encouraging statement of, um, of unity that is for those that love God. So that is the daily word for today. Uh, I'll see you next time.